Yeah, hey you guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today we'll talk about tips that should help you in taking awesome phone photos. That's right, you don't need to have a professional camera in order to take great photos. If you follow these tips, you might be surprised with the quality your phone photos will turn out to have. But before we move on, I would kindly ask you that if you like this video, that you will please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and also click the notify button down here so you will get notified when I release new videos. This will help me a whole lot to produce more and more content for you. So here we go. Tip number one, light. My first tip is light. Even though phones are getting better and better at taking photos in low light situations, shooting with your phone in this sense is the same as shooting with your camera. If you search for the good light, you will have much better photos. When you're outdoors, cloudy days usually offer great light. Snowy days are also great to shoot. If you're shooting on a sunny day, try shooting at times when the sun is not so high, especially if you're shooting portraits. That way you will avoid shadows on the face or if you don't have an option but to shoot at midday, search for places where the sun won't hit your subject directly. If you're indoors, sunny days are usually great as you will get more light inside. And I don't mean shooting in the sun, but it's just that when it's sunny, our houses usually get more natural light in. A good tip is to shoot close to a window. That's where you'll have more light when you're indoors. If you're shooting at night, try searching for light spots. Neon signs, any Christmas lights, or maybe some LED lights you might have at home. Use them in your favor. Light is my number one tip for any type of photography. If you have good light, you've got 50% of your photo right. Tip number two, angles or perspective. Most people get their phones, point, and shoot. If you want to take some awesome phone photos, take a moment to explore some different perspectives. Here's the same photo taken with me just standing there and pointing to the subject as people usually take their photos. And here's the same picture taken after I explored some different angles. So go down on your knees, get up, switch size, move some, and try to get some different angles. Chances are you will get much better and unique photos. Plus, if you're shooting portraits, there are some tips you might want to learn in terms of angles so you will not get body or facial distortions. And if you want to know more about that, I have a video where I explain and I shoot some practical examples of that. And I'll leave a link for it up here and also in the description. Tip number three. Use the grid. Use the grid lines to balance your photos. Activate it by going to settings, camera, and then activate the grid option if you're using an iPhone. It shouldn't be much different if you use Android. Just activate the grid and then you can use one or more junctures of the lines to place what you want to be the main thing in your photo. This will help you to direct the attention to the subject in your photo and will make your pictures much more interesting to anyone who sees it. Tip number four negative space. Another way of making great phone photos is to use the negative space in your advantage. And what negative space is, is the area around the subject in the photo. Having more negative space in a photo makes the subject stand out. If you use this tip along with a grid, you will get even more powerful images, as you will have your subject place where human eyes tend to naturally rest when looking at a photo. Tip number five. Leading lines. Leading lines can also help you to take some great shots with your phone. The leading lines are the lines used to draw the viewer's eyes to the subject in your photo. Consciously or not, when we look at a photo, our eyes are naturally drawn to the lines present on the photo. That way, pointing lines to your subject or framing your subject with lines is a great way to get people to be drawn to what really matters in your photo. So use that in your favor. Tip number six, patterns. We love patterns. Patterns are so pleasing to the eyes. They're found every time strong graphic elements repeat themselves and they can be lines, colors, 
textures, shapes, forms, or whatever other sequence of elements you will find around you. Tip number seven, symmetry. Just as we love patterns, we love symmetry. Humans' eyes are so pleased by symmetry. If you use the tips I gave you before, the grid along with leading lines and the patterns, for example, to create symmetry in your photo, you will have a very powerful tool in your hands to go out there and take some amazing phone photos. Tip number eight, focus. If you're careful about all the tips I just gave you, but you forget the focus, then you'll just have locked your picture's full potential of being an outstanding photo. Focus is super important for a good photo. A photo with no focus will not look as good or professional. So the tip I have for you today is mind your own focus. Good one? Not much, huh? Not really. Well, anyway, in terms of focus, there are two tips I have that will help you to nail it. The first one is to choose your focus manually by clicking the spot in the screen where you want your focus to be. Especially if you're shooting in portrait mode, this tip is super helpful. Second thing is, when you're shooting, make sure you stand still and hold your phone firmly with no movement. That will help you to avoid blurry images. A good tip to get more stability is to lock your elbows under your ribs, you know, like this. So that will give you more stability. Tip number nine, exposure. Exposure is king. An under or overexposed photo can kill your shot. Usually phones automatically do a great job in adjusting the exposure for you, but you can have full control of it by clicking the spot where you want to settle your exposure according to, for example here, and then you can bring it up or down, like this. This tip is great for sunset photos or when you want to take some silhouette shots under exposing your subject, for example. Tip number 10, no zoom please. Yeah, I know it's tempting. Sometimes you just want to get closer and have some more details of the subject. But believe me, if you want great looking phone photos, the zoom is not your ally. It will just decrease the quality of the picture. And after taking care of so many small steps, you won't want to mess this one up. Tip number 11, portrait mode, portrait mode. I know not all phones have the portrait modes, but if yours do, use it. It's amazing to create depth of field, which will give you photos with that creamy, soft and blurry background. The newer phones will even let you set the aperture of your lens. If you have the possibility to play with the aperture, that's a great deal. Tip number 12. 12. Consider a tripod. Tripods are great to take photos of yourself when you don't want that classical selfie look of you holding the camera. It will definitely make your selfies look much more professional. It will also give you more versatility as you can place the tripod anywhere and settle the timer to take your photos of yourself in pretty much any situation. Plus, it is also a good way to avoid blurry photos. You can find many tripods that are great for phones on Amazon, and a good one I have is this one from Manfrotto. And you can also consider a gorilla paw that you can pretty much hang to anything in order to take your photos. I will leave a link for both tripods in the description in case you want to buy or take a further look at them. Next tip is clean your phone's lens. This tip might sound obvious and stupid, but I swear I was already a photographer when I made this mistake myself and I almost switched my phone because my phone photos looked like crap. I thought my phone's camera had some kind of problem or something because my photos, they looked so, I don't know, blurry, muddy. Then a friend looked at it and said, have you tried doing this? Solved. Yeah, I know. I'm so stupid. You probably didn't need to hear this tip. Kind of things I think only I would do. Anyway, I thought I'd share. Tip number 
What number are we on? Tip number 14. Be creative. That's right. Don't be afraid to try. Move around, try some different angles, try some different things. Put something in front of the lens to create depth. Point the camera to the light, against the light. Bring your exposure up and down. Play with the focus. Just try, try, try. I don't always make great photos. Many times I try to be creative, spend some time working on a photo's idea, and it sucks in the end. Part of the deal. If you want to make some awesome phone photos, you have to give it a shot and allow yourself to make mistakes. Maybe you will get five bad images, but because of those five bad photos, you'll get the shot. So go ahead and try. Go ahead and try. Next tip is work and post and use some technology in your favor. If you're still here with me, then you deserve to learn this awesome tip. This tip is just amazing and it will allow you to do the final adjustments to your shots now that you already have your photos. There are two apps I find amazing to give it a final punch to my photos. The first one is Focus. Remember I said that some phones will let you set the aperture of your lens? Well, if yours doesn't, this app will let you do that. Using impressive computational photography, it will allow you to accurately increase or decrease the amount of bokeh in your photo. And in case you don't know what it is, the bokeh is the blurry, creamy, soft background we were talking about that you'll find in portrait modes. Also, this app will let you change the quality of the bokeh. So even if you took a photo in portrait mode and the bokeh is not perfect, if you get these blurry edges, to the face, for example, in your photo, then you can fix that with this app and you can make your photo look just perfect. It's a pretty cool app that can add a special touch to some of your photos, especially the ones where you want to have some depth of field. And the second app I want to talk about is the Lens Distortion, or LD. I use this app even for some of the photos I take with my camera. I simply love it. The LD app will allow you to add flares, snow, rain, lights, fog, and other different types of overlays to your photo. If you use it wisely, it's a powerful tool to make some of your photos stand out. You've got to try it. Final tip is the editing. Edit your photos. Do some final light and color adjustments. This is the cherry of the cake of your photo and is what will make it look special and unique. Here's what a simple three minutes editing in Lightroom Mobile can do to your photo. Straight out of my phone after editing. It's amazing, isn't it? I won't go further into details about editing here, but if you want to learn a little bit about my editing process, I have an entire video where I edit two of my photos, so you can watch it and follow the tips along while you edit your photo. There you will see me do my editing in the desktop version of Lightroom, but you can do the exact same thing with its mobile version. You will find the link for that video up here and also in the description. Enough. That's all for today, folks. Now you have all the tools you need in order to make awesome phone photos. So no more excuses. Go out there and shoot. Try it out and let me know if these tips actually did help you in taking awesome phone photos. I would absolutely love to know. Thanks so much for watching me guys and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.